Can the Giants find the magic of Brian Dayball's first season again in 2024? We're examining the state of the Giants roster today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to issue a big thank you, shout out, and welcome to our everydayers. Those of you who make Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Joe, happy Giants Day to you. Happy I Giants think the Day. first thing that we need to do is give the Giants their flowers for adequately trading for a pass rusher this offseason and giving him a contract. Mm. Unlike the other team from New York. Mm. We traded for a guy and coach hasn't talked to him. It's, it's weird, right? It's, it's a little weird. I, I have some questions. The Giants don't have that problem because they traded for Brian Burns and gave him a top of market contract. And what a great addition to go opposite of Kayvon Thibodeau. I know we'll do the defensive side of the ball. In segment two, but anytime you can just kind of throw a little jab in there, a little, little two piece combo to the New York Jets, yeah, throw a little shade, you got to do it, you know. And I mean, getting Brian Burns and not having to give up a first round pick is pretty doggone big good. Dub. Yeah, that was a that was a big dub for the New York Giants, who are under the microscope here today on the Locked On NFL Scouting podcast. As NFC East week rolls along, Monday we did the Eagles. No, we didn't. Monday, we did the Cowboys. Tuesday, yep. we did there you go. the Eagles. And today is the Giants. Tomorrow, the Commanders. And what we are doing, um, a tradition here on Locked On NFL Scouting, is that we examine every single roster in the NFL. We grade every single player after studying them. We put them in a bucket. Every player is put in a bucket, either roster, cornerstone, quality starter, rookie, adequate starter, replacement level, quality depth, non-roster caliber, incomplete evaluation, or practice squad slash developmental player every position is weighted in terms of importance and at the end of this we score every roster in the nfl and um really sets the stage for the upcoming season so we've done that for the giants and we're here to share our work with you today so let's get into the giants from an offensive perspective um this team experienced a 99 point regression in points scored from 2022 to 2023. And some of that had to do with some instability at the quarterback position where you had three guys that took prominent starts for you between Terod Taylor and Tommy DeVito and Daniel Jones. And uh, you had Saquon Barkley missed a, a couple games in that stretch. Wide receiver was kind of never really settled. You had a bunch of guys that, that got a lot of targets, but – Nobody got more than 79 targets, says Darius Slayton, the leading target player on the offense. A lot of incontinuity. Uh, some issues with Andrew Thomas with his health as well this past season. So like, you, you look at it through that spectrum and you understand, okay, tough year. It's kind of hard to work through a lot of that stuff. But as you look at what they had versus what they now have, I think that's where uh, my first reaction to this is I don't know how much higher the floor is. And entering into year three, I, I think that that's, it's not a great place to be. It's obviously a limited resource league, but that's kind of striking to me as I look at what the Giants have to work with right now. Yeah, there's, it's very fair to have questions about the Giants on offense. They've not been a good offense in recent years. They finished 30th or worse in the NFL in scoring offense in three of the last four seasons, right? Like it's fair to have questions about this offense. And I know that injuries are, are certainly a big part of this conversation and they need their starting quarterback to be healthy and they need their offensive line to be healthy. I mean, 
it was a week to week situation where you just didn't have a clue who was going to play. And I mean, that included your best player in Andrew Thomas yeah. on the offensive side of the football. So the reinforcements on the O line. They bring in a couple of starting guards and Jermaine Illuminer and John Runyon, guys that I think over the last few years have really established themselves as, okay, sufficient level starters. And that's a great yeah. place to be for the Giants because they, they, they didn't have that previously. Now, the the we know Andrew Thomas is a franchise cornerstone type left tackle. To me, the ceiling of this offensive line comes from a couple of young players. John Michael Schmitz at center, who got some good playing time last year. I don't think it was a great opportunity for him to be the best version of himself with how crappy the guard situation was while he had his own injuries and you have a bad offensive line coach and Bobby Johnson, right? Not a great environment. Then at right tackle, it's Evan Neal. High pick, two years of really bad tape. Like, we'll just call it what it is. It's got to come together for Evan Neal this year. Like, so offensive line injury is a problem. This is this is what they've, they, they paid a couple of guards and now we're counting on on some growth from some younger players. But when I look at the depth behind it, yikes! There's big questions, and you mentioned the injuries last year, and Ben Bredesen was the only guy on the offensive line who played more than 800 snaps. That they signed Justin Pugh off the street, he ended up being the second highest snap taker on the offensive line. Yeah, out of nowhere, he's literally off the couch, right? Like from the right. couch to the yeah. lineup, like starting. Yeah, in like the same week. Yeah. So, um, I I think for New York, you're maybe banking on law of averages, saying it can't possibly be as bad as it was last year, and they're probably right. But if they're not, I I, I don't see a lot of quality options behind it. Right. So that that's the concern for New York offensively, because you saw how crippling it was last year. With just constant pressure and, and inability to to sort things out up front. Couldn't function. Yeah, couldn't function. Right. So I have the same worries about the depth, even though there's some new players that are a part of that mix. Now, you mentioned the two guards in Illuminor and John Runyon, and I think that the floor of those players, the Giants should feel very, very good about. And that hopefully gets you in a place where you feel good about John Michael Schmitz and have those two guys on either side. And then it just becomes, okay, what is Evan Neal eventually going to end up being? Yeah, it's a defi defining year for his career. Um, the receiver position, like Darius Slayton's kind of been the guy for, for this team, right? He's led the, the team in receiving, like, is it five of the last six years? Something along those lines. He's been the most productive receiver they've had. Now you add Malik Neighbors as a top 10 pick, and we know the, the playmaking upside that exists there. It was good to see Wandell Robinson – uh, help this team last year, kind of becoming the type of player, like showing glimpses of the type of player that they they drafted him to be as a fairly high pick. Yeah. Um, but really, you you kind of look at this and you need neighbors to be a thing right away. You need Slayton to kind of continue being a a, 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 a a meaningful piece of this offense. You need Wondell Robinson to take a step, and you don't have Saquon Barkley. Jalen, Jalen Hyatt's got a hit. He uh, yeah, that's that would be helpful as well. Because I'm not counting on anything from like Allen Robinson. I'm not counting on things from Isaiah McKenzie. I think those are your your receivers as, in the passing game. As fun of a story as Isaiah Hodgins was in 2022 when he kind of came in, it's it's one of those guys where somebody somebody has to catch the ball, right. right? You get these guys in these bad environments and they put up production, and you're like, oh, what a nice hit. But then as the rest of the things get better around them, yeah, I think it becomes more prominent. Oh, this guy was available, or oh, this guy only had these opportunities because somebody had to click and somebody had to catch the ball. And I think Hodgins realistically is not going to be a long-term building block of your wide receiver core, no matter what his play down the stretch in 2022 ended up looking like. It could be tough for him to get a Jersey on Sundays. Like he's not a player that brings yeah. special teams appeal. Right. So like you're, you're, you're not going to address him and receivers. Uh, him and a trail on Burks working yeah. on the punt team, huh? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I yeah. don't think Titans fans have tuned in today. So no, we'll prob probably probably not. Uh, <laughs> let's talk. We got more to say about these skill players, including the tight yeah. end situation. Uh, Devin Singletary in for Saquon Barkley. Of course, the defense. A lot to get to. So be sure to stick with us. Folks, the NFL schedule is here. So many big games. You know, at MetLife Stadium, there's, there's basically a game every weekend. Maybe you want to get to some of those. Well, check out Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to purchase tickets for all the sports, music, 
comedy and theater events near you. The app is awesome. It's easy to navigate, and they specialize in last-minute tickets. They give you flash deals. They give you a seat view so you know exactly what to expect when you get to the venue. But probably my favorite thing is the all-in prices. You know the price that you're going to pay at the end from the beginning. No surprise fees coming your way. You can choose to look at the prices as all in prices. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL. That's L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Joe. So you wanted to finish skill group. You want to talk about Devin Singletary, your favorite player in the league. <laughs> I have Daniel Jones, yeah, and yeah. Locke. Yeah. Where I like at? Devin Singletary. I mean, he's not the caliber of player Saquon Barkley can be for you. There's no question. But there is a a very consistent element Singles to Devin. And Man, he really does. Singles and doubles. Singles and deb- doubles all day long. He's really, I think my favorite thing about watching Devin Singletary throughout his career is like, I think he's gotten so much better in short yardage and giving that element to an offense to go with like his very like quick, he's he's, he's like very stumpy build, hides behind the blocks and has that shifty ability to kind of like just shoot out into space and, and really win in tight quarters, like has that make you miss ability. Now he doesn't have a second gear, right? There's, he doesn't right. have breakaway speed. So, you know, sometimes he gets going and gets caught from behind, but. I think he's a, a really a sufficient level starter that the element of consistency where, you know, Saquon Barkley, you know, you can have some monster performances, but there's been injuries and, and you know, durability issues there. Devin Singletary is going to be there for you every week. You know exactly what you're what you're getting into. And like between his time in Buffalo and his one year in Houston, he's been the leading rusher for some really good offenses. So I don't think that he'll be prohibitive to their success. And there's my uh, annual I appreciate Devin Singletary rant. His um his spray chart is really funny to look at from a production standpoint where he's been in the league five years. His lowest yards from scrimmage is 956. His highest yards from scrimmage <laughs> is 1099. And in yeah. the last three years, his yards from scrimmage has been 1098, 1099, and 1091. It's just here you get about eleven hundred yards from scrimmage yeah. from this dude. He's gonna touch the ball two hundred times. Catch some balls out of the backfield for you. He's going to get a lot of three, four, five yard runs. Second no half of some games, those are going to turn into eight, nine, 10, 12 yard runs. Yeah. And that's it. And <laughs> with the, in- I think with the interior that the Giants have on the line now, if it stays healthy, that combination should theoretically give you a, another really consistent performance from Devin Singletary, who's missed one game in the last four seasons. Yeah. Well, in the depth here, I know some recent draft picks, Eric Gray um, out of Oklahoma, who I, I like coming out of Oklahoma. Yeah. And then Ty- Tyrone Tracy, a lot of people are very intrigued with him as a converted receiver. Um, so I'm I'm curious to see how this all sorts itself out. I wouldn't want this to be the year that Devin Singletary gets hurt, though, right? Because I think that's right. very unproven depth nonetheless. So let, let's go to defense, and then we'll maybe talk about the quarterback situation in the end of the show. Uh, defensively, we, we've already teased Brian Burns and his addition to a front that included one of the best defensive tackles in the game in Dexter Lawrence, uh, one of their promising young draft picks in Kayvon Thibodeau. Aziz Ojolari has shown some life as a pass rusher. It's it's maybe not linear progression for him. Uh, and I think the Giants may, maybe kind of told us what they thought in the trade for Brian Burns, or maybe it was just, Hey, the value is too good. We, we, mm-hmm. we have the cap space to do it. Let's just do this. This, this team is going to go as far as the pass rush up front can carry them. Cause I think there's a lot of youth and experience questions on the back end, whatever the front four horses are capable of doing is how far this defense is going to go in my eyes, because that, that core four up front and you'd still think one of them is an upgradable player with the other defensive tackle. But that core four is the strength of this, this defensive side of the ball, and they're going to have their work cut out for them because they're going to have to get to the quarterback fast. Yeah, I think when you when you frame it like that, you feel good about Lawrence and Burns and Kayvon Thibodeau. 
as part of that equation. But then you're kind of like, all right, who else? Who Who's our other starting defensive tackle? I, I think you're going to be pretty underwhelmed by Jordan Phillips. I'm, I'm well acquainted with Jordan Phillips. Um, Aziz Ojolari is kind of a sub rusher, I think can give you something, but there's not a lot of depth. And, yep. I, you know, we'll see what happens with like, Shane Bowen taking over this defense, which I think is an important conversation, right? Different. It would be a very structurally different defense than what Wink did. Um, which I think is is helpful for maximizing the front. Yes. Because he's if, not, if it was Wink, you're, you're going to blitz everybody anyway. Right, and it's like, oh, right. Yeah. Kind of better on the back end. So we need to figure out kind of if we're, there's going to be waves of rushers, who's those guys are going to be. But like you said, man, Beyond beyond this, you, you get you get concerned. I mean, I really like Bobby O'Karaki as a linebacker, but Micah McFadden, I think, is flashed. We he's don't know. Solid, yeah, he's solid, solid but like uh, I don't know, man. He like, he's, is he an ideal maybe running mate? Maybe not. I mean, you go back to when he was at Indiana. What was he best at? Pressuring, pressure, yeah, and, downhill, and yeah. blitzing, and so. Maybe the foil of him and Simmons is the two kind of other guys opposite O'Karaki. You can get complimentary foils for certain game situations. I kind of like Simmons, though, in the Shane Bowen defense, though. I, I think I feel like they've that Tennessee defense has been very creative with how, how they've used their back seven, mm -hmm. uh, particularly the secondary players. And I feel like they could probably get something out of him. And I think, you know, Isaiah Simmons for the hype that existed with his pre-draft uh, assessment and uh, where he went, you know, the first couple of years were, were pretty ugly. And and I think Arizona just has a long list of like not being able to figure out their own players that they draft. I think that's better now, but uh, under Steve Kime, that was a real joke. Uh, I, I, the last couple of years have been better for Isaiah Simmons. And so he, can he be an X factor for you? But like outside of this linebacker situation, we need a lot to come together in the secondary. Yeah. Um, no Xavier McKinney, a uh, part of the mix here. So you're leaning on like Tyler Newbin as a fairly high draft pick. Dane Belton uh, la last year was a fairly high draft pick. I really like what's kind of coming along for Jason Pinnock as a starting caliber player. Jalen Mills is decent depth, but like there's a lot of players at corner and there's some talent, right? There's some, some higher draft picks in Deontay Banks, but like these to me, the reason you said what you said about the front is because you're telling us that you're very concerned about the corners. Yeah. I mean, you, okay. Drew Phillips, rookie this year, no right. career snaps in the NFL. Tyler Newbin, rookie this year, no career snaps in the NFL. Deontay Banks, first round pick last year, but he's got 800 snaps in the NFL, right? Cordell Flott in two seasons has 800 snaps on defense in the NFL, right? Like it, it in, in the world in which that's, four of your five starting players in the secondary, you just have a lot of youth and inexperience that the guys up front are going to have to make you right at times. Yeah. And, and Oh, by the way, now you have a new scheme installed on top of it that it just, it, I, I'm really leery about the early season outlook as these young guys all have to play together because I think your best combination of talent includes a lot of youth. And if that's the case, that with a new scheme and inexperience in a tough division to have to play coverage, let's be honest, it's just a bad mix. Wouldn't surprise me if Nick McLeod winds up starting opposite of Deontay Banks as a guy that's gained some experience last year. Um might give them their best option because I think there's going to always be some limitations with a guy like Cordell Flott and the stature and durability issues already in his career. You just need, you're, I think you're just relying on a lot to go right here for this defense to be good enough for this team to get back to, all right, this was a, a team that went to the playoffs in Brian Dayball's first year. And defensively, I mean, they, they've, I pointed out the kind of struggles they've had on offense. I mean, it's not like defense has been a better story. Better story that this defensively, this has been, you know, a, a bottom tier defense for a number of years. And so, I think you yeah. you take comfort in knowing that you have added Brian Burns to this mix. But like, I think there's so much that has to be. There's so much that has to to work out 
that it, law of averages probably tells you that it's not all going to hit. Just just to reaffirm what you just said, uh, there have been 10 times in Giants franchise history that they have conceded more than 400 points in a season. That includes 2019, 2021, 2018, 2023. Their their point differential last year minus one forty one was seventh worst in franchise history, and twenty twenty one under Joe Judge was one of the six incidences that were worse than that. So it's both sides of the both poles got to figure it out. Yo, they've had ne- they've had a negative point differential every single season many, since twenty seventeen. You know, I can say many seasons in a row, and the. The 2016 McAdoo season was 26, and then you got to go back to 2012 for the next positive point differential season. Lord God. All right. Hopefully the you know the tides can turn. We're gonna bring this conversation to a close. Talk a little Daniel Jones, maybe Daniel Jones. Danny Dimes it out. So be sure to stick with us. Today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest, big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you. And it's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than what's going on with our favorite sports team. And it's important to get those things off your chest every once in a while. Therapy is helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It's not just for people who've experienced major trauma. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Just visit betterhelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on. I have my crazy New York Giants stat. All right. For you. Uh, so the Giants, we've just outlined a lot of really ugly statistics for them. What was their ranking in turnover differential last season? I, I don't know. Number one. No. They had the best turnover. To tr- that, whoa. Has a team ever had that and had a, a losing Teams record? rank in takeaway giveaway ratio, according to Pro Football Reference, has the Giants at plus 12. And we're 6-11. To go 6-11 and 11 with a minus 141 turnover differential. I... I know that it's not an easy answer to find, but I wonder if the team with the best tur- turnover differential in the NFL has ever had a losing record, much less six and eleven. Well, they they can thank the uh, Washington Commanders and the Philadelphia Eagles for that title because they turned it. The, the Commanders turned it over seven times in two games against them, and and the Eagles turned it over six times in two games against them. But nevertheless, that uh, that's my crazy New York Giants stat. What are we doing about Daniel Jones? Well, I think the team's telling you what their plans are for him by the inaction that they have had with the contract, right? It's a team that they have the opportunity to spend in free agency. There is a sense of urgency to compete and win and spend. And we let a guy like Xavier McKinney walk out the door and Price is a part of that. And obviously there's a new scheme change, so I understand that. But they have not touched Daniel Jones' contract. And you would think the reason why, because he was cataclysmically bad last year. And they have the out after this season in the contract with the contract that they gave him, the four-year $160 million contract. I am a little sympathetic. Daniel Jones was sacked 30 times. On 160 dropbacks last season, or 160 pass attempts last season, 15, 16% of his dropbacks, he was sacked in six games. Didn't make it. This is not the kind of player to have that kind of structure in front of. He does not do well in those situations. So, okay, you, you gave yourself a fighting chance now by fortifying your interior offensive line. But if it's going to be right for Daniel Jones, if he's going to figure it out and then they're going to be like, Oh, okay, maybe we can roll with it for another year. Um, he has to perform a lot better inside structure and the giants have to give him more plays to work with inside of structure. 
I um I don't know for sure who signed off on signing Daniel Jones to a four year hundred and sixty million dollar deal. But I'm guessing there was some level of alignment between Brian Dayball, Joe Shane, and Giants ownership, right? This is a big decision. It's almost like the marching orders are make it work. Like you, we, you know, we, we collaborated right. on this decision. We, they had, they could have drafted a quarterback this year. They chose not to like, all right, let's see it through. And I think the, the unfortunate reality is that there's not a whole lot you can point to in the past for Daniel Jones. that makes you say, yeah, you know what? This is definitely the type of quarterback that could be the reason why we are uh, a playoff caliber team on a regular basis. But I think you have to do your due diligence at the same time because you did make your bed. Now you got to sleep in it. I think the, the harsh alternative to consider here was at the time of the Daniel Jones contract, the conversation was, well, who else are you going to, like, what other options do you have? Right? Like, who else are you going to find? Baker Mayfield signed a one-year, $4 million contract. Yeah. Right? Like, and maybe Tampa's going to end up, their new contract, their three-year, $100 million contract that they gave Baker, like, maybe they'll find themselves in similar yeah. shoes without Dave Canales. Like, who knows? But the point being, when that decision was made and then there was a player out there who signed for that, that was the alternative, and then had that performance, like, it is an extra bit of salt in the wound of that decision. I think Baker and Brian Dayball would have been awesome. Yeah. I'd have liked that a lot. So, so they have an out of this contract. Like if they get through this seat, well, they're going to get through this season. They, they have, this is their chance to get out of the deal. But, but if, if we're at that point, who's still here? Is Dave no all still here? Is Joe? No you know what I mean? They, they were all a part of it. And if you go back, their first year collectively was that 2021, 2022 off season. Right. That roster over that overperformed from a win loss perspective. They did really well with coaching and situational football that regressed this year. If it doesn't work and you have a two year sample size of the regression and they get a lot of young players, specifically that 2022 draft class with Evan Neal, top 10 pick, Wondell Robinson, they drafted in the top 50, Cordell Flott, a lot of youth. A lot of draft picks, yeah, and the development hasn't been there too. And uh, I think if if the bottom drops out, I think the Daniel Jones contract and decision is probably going to ultimately be the icing on the cake that kind of seals the fate for everybody involved if it doesn't work well this season. And, and the fatal mistake there being year one of a new regime where you felt like we're going to have a legitimate rebuild, you overachieve, you go nine seven and one, and you make the mistake a lot of teams do. Well, we were close. Right. Like, let's try to bring as much of this back as we can and build. And the next thing you know, you're you you, you just weren't honest with about what you actually had. Yeah. I and, mean, you, you turn around and traded a, a, what the 100th overall pick for Darren Waller. He gave you one season and now it sounds like he's going to retire. And he was not good in that one season. He got one touchdown. Joe Shane will only have himself to blame, right? Like. Yeah. I'm, and I'm sure the pressures of the New York market only further complicates that, right? Because it, playing in Jacksonville or playing in uh, Indianapolis is not the same animal as playing in New York. And there's momentum. The team's been bad. We made the playoffs. We won a playoff game. Let's start hacking. And uh, I think you contrast that to a team like Minnesota, who was the other 2022 team yeah. that overachieved, I remember us having those conversations yeah. about, hey, we really like how Minnesota is still being process-oriented. They're not getting too far ahead of themselves. The Giants, they're maybe getting a little bit more aggressive uh, to try and spark some things. Did the franchise tag with Saquon, trade for Darren Waller, Daniel Jones contract extension. 
and it hasn't hasn't clicked. This season's going to hinge on Joe Shane decisions. Obviously, we talked about uh, Daniel Jones and the decision to pay him, but you you kind of pointed this out in the in the pre show. You go back to that first draft in twenty twenty two. They had five picks in the top eighty one. And those players are Kayvon Thibodeau. Okay, that looks pretty good. good. Evan Neal, Wandell Robinson, Josh Easy Udo, and Cordell Flott. It's do or time. It's do or die time, man. Yeah. And all, the, all those guys got to spread their wings and fly for that. Oh, in a big way. Yeah. And AZ Udo is probably not even going to be a starter, right? No, like, it, yeah. I mean, bless him. They played him at tackle last year. Right. That was a disservice. Talk about yeah. not putting a player in a, a position to be successful, right? Right. You got to sign somebody off the street and give the kid a chance. So that's the New York Giants. Uh, certainly not the most optimistic we've come out of looking at a team. Um, but I, I think if you were to look at the 2022 season, I think this roster is better than that one. So there's your, your yeah. first glimmer of hope, right? The second thing is the Giants in Dable's two years have been 11th and first in the league in t- uh, turnover differential. So that's pretty consistent. They've been consistent at protecting the football and getting turnovers. Maybe the turnovers don't come consistently week to week. They come in bunches and disproportionately. But nevertheless, 11th and 1st in turnover differential. Can you get back to the situational football magic? And that was the first question that Joe asked. And that, along with young player development, is going to determine the fate of the New York Giants this season. That is going to do it for us. Here on Locked on NFL Scouting, I'm Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. We appreciate you guys checking out the show, making it a great rest of your day. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. We are out of here.